Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I'm going to have a bit of root porn today. Um, but it is actually quite serious. <laughs> There's a lot of hoo-ha going on at the moment about certain fertilisers. Uh, in this video will remain, remain nameless um, because there could be other fertilisers involved. And I don't want to accuse one and one only. But what I do want to chat about is roots on orchids, the functions they actually you know, achieve for the plant and uh, just around that subject. So I've started with this one. Why do you think I'm starting with this one? Doesn't look the best of plants, does it? It's a rescue cattleya. Okay. I looked at the blooms on the internet and I thought, no, I'm not chucking that out. I'm going to give it a chance. It should have been out on the hedge, under the hedge, really. It's pretty tatty. Um, but, you know, this is its oldest pseudo bulb. Its leaf is going over. That leaf is now useless to the plant. It cannot photosynthesize. It's lost its chlorophyll. However, it's got three others that are still green, so it's got the ability to photosynthesize. So it can produce some food from its leaves, but it also can get some other nutrients via its roots. Now, I've picked on this one deliberately. As it's a rescue cattleya, uh, when it was first put in that pot, it didn't really have many roots at all. In fact, it had a couple of chunky ones that had seen better days that I left on, even though I know they're going to die, simply because it helped keep the flipping thing upright, along with the scaffolding. <laughs> but cattleyas need to dry out thoroughly before they're watered and fed again. So in the process that I've been going through of flushing all my orchids, prior to yesterday's drowning of this poor little thing when it got flushed, it hadn't had any water for nine or ten days. Now during that nine or ten days, it did that and doubled the size of that. That's the rate of growth. And that's with a very, very poor root system. So it's recovering its root system. It's got three smashers there coming under the new growth, all with bright green root tips. Come on, grow. And it's got these two that it's pushed down into the media. Again, bright green tips, nice white roots. That is what new roots are supposed to look like root porn yeah good roots nice white shiny ones and part of the reason they're white and shiny is they're brand shiny new and that's how the new roots would come out now as we know <clears throat> this isn't the root you might want to call it the root but it's not the root is a tiny little filament that runs down the middle of there and follows the root tip as it grows this is velamen it's a protective coating over the delicate root inside. That's quite important. I'll come to that in a minute. So that's a recovering cattleya with some shiny new roots. It's going to pull through. Whether these eyes down here have had it or whether they will manage to shoot out or whether it will find some others, I don't know. But it's got one good one. It's pushing on strong and it's pushing out a nice new root system. It is saved. Yay, we like that blooms on that are bloody fabulous. Right, let's move on. On the subject of root porn, totally different type of orchid. This is an epidendrum, um, nocturnum I think it's called, something like that. Now this sat and did nothing on its mount for a, quite a long time. I was getting worried and then it decided to push out a new growth and I went whoopee. And just prior to that new growth it decided to push out some new roots and I went whoopee but let's have a look in more detail. Those roots in there buried in the moss are the older roots. They've, got, they've gone green. They're probably, some of them are still functional, but not really that good. So the plant obviously needed some root, new roots. So it, it did just that. But let's have a look at them. That one going across there that disappears around the back has got brown stains all over it. That's root burn. That's what it looks like, because some people might not know what all the fuss is about. Now, that root is not playing ball. That's decided to bury its head in the sand and burrow into the mount. Chances are, the back of that root and the root tip buried up in the bark is fine, because it's not going to dry out that fast, because the mount gets wet when I water it. Those two roots have lost their growing tip. They've been burnt. That's what we mean by root burn. It's taken the growing tips off of those roots. But they're still functional. 
even though they've got some brown staining on them, most of that vellum isn't stained brown, so it can still absorb water and nutrients and get to the delicate root inside. The delicate root inside is probably okay. I'm not a scientist, I can't say that definitely. This latest root here has grown quite fast, it's still white. However, you can see the staining on that one. That is not a sad plant. The roots are functional and it's pushing up a new growth. It has leaves, it can photosynthesize. It's just not quite as pretty as it might be with shiny white roots. All with growing tips instead of some that have been lost. But it's not going downhill. It will still survive, it will still be okay. Uh, right, next one. Ooh, totally different plant altogether again. This is a Brassavola type. Now they can produce multiple leads where these huge big new growths will come from. Yeah, that's a beauty. And you'd better bloom. And it'll push out some roots that attach to the mount. It'll even climb round the back. Um, you know, that's good. Roots often head away from the light. So if you've got a mounted plant facing your brightest light situation, the roots will often climb round the back where they get a bit of shade and it's a bit cooler and they stay wet longer. Okay, down here we have shiny new roots. They're the longest ones and they're off the latest lead, so they are the new roots. Let me plonk this down. So if we look, here's the lead. Latest roots are ones like this. Yeah, they come out and they go right down here. And they are in the main white and they have a nice green growing tip. Nice, healthy roots. Some of the older ones, yeah, they are being replaced. Some of those buried in that moss are the original roots when I got it. They're actually dead, so they're non-functional. They might still have a grasping uh, sort of uh, thing going on around in the moss there, but, you know, they've served their day, and many orchids do that. As the leads push forward, new roots come out. Some will attach, some will be aerial, depending on the type of plant. And a lot of the older ones will just die back. It's replacing its bulbs with new growth, and it replaces its roots as it goes. So it sort of leaves the older part of the plant behind and forgets about it. However, the older bulbs can still hold nutrients and support the plant, as we all know. Okay, so some of those roots are quite stained. They have been burnt. Some of them, not so bad. And if I can stop the process, they'll stay white. Oh, I'll come to that in a minute. So there's another one. Oh, let's have a look at this one. This is an encyclia, uh, yet to bloom for me. It's got an old leafless bulb, it's got two bulbs with some leaves on, it had a sheath and it didn't flower. <laughs> but it's doing that, it's pushing out a lovely new growth. And in underneath that growth, deep down in there, is a mass of new roots. It, it really took off this spring and chucked roots out all over the place. However, they're not all good roots. Quite a few of those have got burns on them. In fact, virtually all of them. So the roots on this are more sensitive to some than some of my other orchids, and they have been burnt. Not all the green tips have gone, it's still got some, and those roots are still functional. They'd look a lot prettier if they didn't have brown stains on them. Okay, And again, it's got older dead roots, you can see sticking out there. Well, that's what they do. They do dump off their older roots. So I'm not worried about that plant. It just doesn't look as pretty as it should do. This is a plant that is a worry. This is Lelia anseps. Uh, hang on while I fiddle with the hands. Right, there we go. This is Lelia anseps. Now, I thought I had a beastie in here eating the ends off of my roots. So I treated it. At the end of that treatment, I don't believe anything was left alive. <laughs> Highly unlikely, let's put it that way. Um, this is suffering badly. Most of its... Uh, what I call semi-old roots, in other words, last year's roots, the ones that I got it with, have shriveled, gone brown, and are probably not as functional as they were before. The new roots have all been burnt off. Yeah, that was new roots once upon a time. It's still got a couple of white roots, not many. It's quite a big plant. And worst of all, that's its nice new growth. Yay! That should bloom, actually. Given half a chance. Is it going to get that chance? Those are its new roots, just behind there. They started to grow towards the mount, and they stopped. They've lost their tips. 
Now, it still could be something managed to survive in there and is eating them, but I still think this is fertiliser problem. Um, that little root there, away from the moss, those were all white and shiny a couple of months ago. Now they've gone over. So this plant is suffering quite badly. And it's root burn and it's fertiliser. OK, so that's what I wanted to do was show a variety of roots on a variety of plants, what they ought to look like. Let's have a look at this one. This is a dendrobium. Findlayanum, I think it is, yeah. And um, this is pushing out its new root system. Its old root system will die back. It's already started. Its new roots are in the main white and shiny with lovely green tips. That's the best root system it's had. And it's pushing out lovely new canes. All I can say is that this is getting watered with the same stuff as everything else, so its roots aren't as sensitive for one reason or another that will remain unknown. I don't need to know. All I know is that some roots are more sensitive than others. OK? That one's doing OK. It's not got a problem. We could carry on treating that exactly the same as the others. So, root burn. My Mazda Valias, they are very sensitive. They do not like high levels of feed. They are sensitive to burn. But they are different to the ones I've just shown you. Most of the ones I've just shown you are on mounts. When I water those, they dry fast. That's why they're on a mount. I want them to do that. But in doing so, they haven't had chance to absorb all of the nutrients that they were given. So the fertilizer has its water evaporate around it and it goes back into its crystallized form, still sitting on the roots. And that's what causes the burns. I don't believe it's the fertilizer in its liquid form. It's the dried form after the water evaporates. If you think about it, it becomes quite a lot stronger at that point. So that's what's doing the damage. Um, these Mazda Valias stay moist and all of their roots are in the pot. So the fertilizer in the liquid that they get, albeit at a weak level, never dries out. So it gives the plant all the time in the world to absorb those nutrients without it ever crystallizing and burning the roots. They're fine. They're not a problem. This one's a problem. Now this is annoying. This is my Neo Finesha and it's a variegated one and it's a smashing little plant and it's coming on well and it's just recently bloomed. But look at those roots. At the start of this year it pushed out those lovely white new roots and on this plant the root tips are a really delicate pink. It's beautiful. Now look at the state of those roots. That is the fertilizer did that. It spoilt the look of that plant completely. The plant's not going to die. The plant's not going to suffer a huge amount. But its new roots can no longer extend. They've lost their tips. It'll have to produce some more. And in the meantime, it will photosynthesize through its leaves. And the non-brown parts, and possibly even the brown parts, will still absorb nutrients and they will still get through to the delicate roots inside but it spoilt the look of that plant. That was a smasher in early spring when all those new roots came out. So it is damaging my stuff. Solutions, I can go back to tap water. My TDS on my tap water is about 240. The content is unknown, but a lot of my orchids lived on that for years and didn't die, so I could do that. I could give them pure RO water with nothing in it, so they would get virtually no nutrients whatsoever through their root system. They would rely on photosynthesis. It's summertime, the day lengths are long, the light's bright. They'll survive for a while like that, so I could just give them RO water. In other words, they'd be permanently flushed. Sounds like me down the pub. Anyway, so that's another choice. The other choice is half and half, some tap water, some RO water. The other choice is to reduce my fertilizer strength dramatically, especially for the mounted orchids with exposed roots. So those are my choices. I have yet to make my decisions. So this is still food for thought. But I just thought I'd show you some damaged roots, some good roots, so that you know what the fuss is about. And to me, that really sums up what the fuss is about. I didn't do that. I haven't spoiled the look of that plant. The fertilizer did it. There's something iffy about it. So I need a new version of fertilizer suitable for RO water. The only one available I can see is the MSU formula, which is manufactured and produced in the US.
the wonderful US of A, as they like to say. And there's quite a large amount of water between me and that stuff. The only version of it that seems to be for sale in Europe is more like a garden fertiliser, not specifically for RO water. That one doesn't seem to have got on a boat and come across yet, or a plane. So um, I might have to get it from the States. And that's going to cost a lot of money to actually get that posted. But let's sum up that extra cost. Say it costs 25 quid to send a tub of that fertiliser. That's the cost of one reasonable orchid. And for that cost, I get to look after all of these orchids. So is it expensive? Is it hell? It's the cost of one orchid. So that's probably the way I'm going to go. So there we go, just to talk about roots, what their function is, what they're supposed to look like, and what some of mine now look like as a consequence of root burn. Hope you've sort of enjoyed that, and I hope you haven't got root burn. And if you haven't, think yourselves lucky, and the chances are most people don't even know what this root burn is because they've never seen it. If you haven't seen it and you've got it, you now know what it looks like. And it spoils the look of your plant. I don't think it kills your plant, but in severe cases, it could be heading along those lines. That plant needs to recover now. It's not going to get fed, not until it pushes some new roots out. It's just going to use its leaves, photosynthesize, and it's going to get virtually pure water. So there we go, just a chat about roots. I know some of you love your root porn. And all you lucky people with water culture plants where you can seal your roots in nice crystal clear water. Well, you probably don't even know what a root burn is. <laughs> thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for my subscribers doing all the thanks and stuff like that, as we always do. And uh, yeah, just a bit of food for thought. A bit of root porn. Bye for now.